In this video, I am going to be taking you through these steps of drawing this realistic tiger with colored pencils, which includes some tips about color choices, layering, and drawing fur. For this drawing, I am using Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils and Strathmore 300 series Bristol vellum paper. I'll have a link to it and all of the supplies I used in this video in the description. To start this drawing off, I am going to add a light layer of cream to get the yellow into the eyes. Then I'm going to work in some grays. And from there, I'm going to use black to fill in all of the black shadows around the eyes. Filling in the blacks of an area that I'm going to be working on is usually a first step that I do because it does help you uh, try to evaluate the uh, values for those particular areas you're working on and kind of get a little bit more accuracy on what values you need to have there. Whereas if you just went ahead and tried to fill everything in and slowly darken it over time, usually you'll end up uh, making more mistakes than trying to get it accurate. It will help you in the long run filling out the blacks first so that you can just have an easier time trying to judge the values and where they need to be in between your lightest shade, which would be the white of the paper. And of course the black as being the darkest shade of your drawing. And now I'm going to use a layer of a yellow orangey color for the base of the fur. And it's okay to just do a light layer of this. I don't want to go too heavy because I can always add more later if I need more. Uh, the way I usually approach my first initial layers is just doing some light layers until I feel like I'm close. I'm not trying to worry about get it, getting everything absolutely perfect at this stage because once you blend it out with odorless mineral spirits, uh, it does end up looking much brighter than what you originally just had down as the pencil um, strokes. As you can see I'm blending that out now and it's turning a little bit more yellow than the orange it kind of looked before when it was just the pencil strokes. The full three and a half hour real-time version of this tutorial is available on my Patreon, which also includes the reference photo and a color sheet for you to follow along with. If you sign up for the $5 a month beginner tier, you gain access to the full tutorial as well as a lot of other real-time tutorials between one to four hours long. And if you sign up for the $10 a month tier, you will have access to all of the $5 beginner tutorials and all of the even longer advanced tutorials. So that's even more real-time drawing tutorials for you to learn from to draw wildlife and pets. If you are looking to improve your drawing skills with colored pencils, graphite, or soft pastel, these tutorials are a great way for you to learn all there is to drawing. So now I'm gonna start filling in the nose. I want to fill in this as the first initial base layer. I wanna get that blended out because I do wanna make sure I get those pinky colors in there um, and pretty accurate to the pinks that they need to be and of course dried before I come back over this later with some browns and black to darken everything out and get the values where they need to be. While that's drying, I'm going to fill in the black shadows of the whiskers and the lower jaw. So now I am going to take my black pencil and fill in all of the stripes around the face of the tiger. And I want to do this now uh, to go ahead and get the shapes in and kind of preserve where they are from what I do have down from my sketch. So that way as I fill in the other colors as I progress with this drawing that I don't end up losing where these stripes are at. And of course when you're filling in black into your drawing and then you're of course going to be working in areas around it as you complete your drawing, you wanna be really careful of blending if you're using odorless mineral spirits, of course, because you don't wanna end up dragging your brush over any of that black and smearing it where you don't want it. I'm just gonna fill in the black shadows for the ear. And 
And then of course I'm going to blend this out and then continue further with the stripes on the tiger's face. Um, adding a layer of black and then using odorless mineral spirits to blend with. Odorless mineral spirits breaks down the binders of the colored pencils and allows the pigments of the colored pencils to get blended kind of semi-permanently into the paper. And so that allows you to add more layers on top of your original layers than you would have been able to get otherwise. So using odorless mineral spirits to blend with instead of just burnish blending has some benefits to it when you're working with darker colors because that means you can get a little bit more layers than you could if you didn't use odorless mineral spirits. So you can get those blacks to be a little bit darker than you would have before. And that is something I feel is really, really important when you're working on Bristol vellum paper because of course I am using Strathmore 300 series Bristol vellum paper for this drawing. And that is kind of the smoother version of the Bristol vellum papers. And with using the smoother paper, you're limit, way more limited on the number of layers you can do. So that also kind of means that you can't get your darks as dark as you could on a medium textured paper. Now I'm going to use a darker warm gray to fill in some of those gray colors in the ear. And then of course, I'm gonna go over the top of that with black and start working in some of those darker shadows in there. I'm gonna slowly work in and adjust these shadows here. So I am taking light ultramarine to some of the areas on the tiger's face because white fur usually isn't always just white. It actually has some hints of blue in it. However, with this particular tiger and the reference photo that I am using, um, there really isn't a whole lot of blue color to the whites of this tiger's fur, but you know, there are some other photos out there or other animals you may be doing that are more white than this tiger, where of course there may be some blue colors in there. White, like I said, it's just, it's never just white. You usually have some blue colors in there. Sometimes you'll have yellows and even some reds. And then um, usually in the shadows on white fur, you'll actually have quite a bit of yellow and there is sometimes even green in there. It depends on the background of whatever reference photo you're using, um, the reflective light that comes off onto the animal that you're drawing. If you're drawing an animal with a green background, chances are some of those whites will actually have a little cast of green on them. So now I'm going to take burnt ochre. I'm going to start adding in the first layer of, I wouldn't exactly call these shadows, but kind of the mid-tone um, shadows to the fur. When you're making fur strokes, it's really, really important to pay attention to which direction they go and uh, the length that they are. And when you're working on faces of animals, this of course is always changing. So don't be afraid to take your time while you're drawing and just pay attention to the different changes of the fur direction and their length because it is important in your drawing looking realistic to get those as accurate as you can. So I'm going to take a yellow orange color and I'm going to darken out some of the values on the face as well as, you know, it's also adding yellow and orange to it as well, getting a little bit more color in there. And 
I am going to use my slice tool to scrape off a few areas on the inner part of this face just to kind of create some verti dales in there. Uh, I'm not going to create too many because I did try to approach this drawing by using just mainly um, first stroke techniques instead of relying on scraping off with that slice tool to create fur details. I'm now going to use Burnt Sienna for the darker shadows of the fur. And as I'm adding these in, I'm going to try and work through all of the area that I see these darker values in. Once I get that filled in, then I'm going to worry about darkening anything out more than what I already have it. I'm now going to use Walnut Brown to add in some darker values to the face. Now I am going to take black and I am going to darken out all of the stripes on this tiger's face. And this is, of course is the second layer to the stripes and I am pressing a little hard to make sure I get a heavy application. And I am also focused on trying to add in some other stripes that I didn't include earlier. And I am trying to integrate these stripes into the fur. So I am making some strokes on the edges of them just to try and make them look more natural. I'm going to start working in the stripes for the back and shoulders of the tiger. And while those are drying, I'm going to finish darkening out the rest of the stripes along the face. I'm going to add a lighter yellow orange to the um, back of the tiger. The color of the tiger on its back is, or back and shoulders, is a lot brighter than the orange colors on the face. So I want to make sure I get enough color in there um, before I proceed further with adding in any of the other stripe details and of course darkening it. I'm going to take burnt ochre and start adding in some of those darker first strokes to the back and shadow or shoulder. <laughs> I'm not going to take Van Dyke brown. Um, you can use whatever brown you may have. I'm going to add some darker first strokes as I work in from the face into the um, back and shoulders. And of course, as I'm working into the back and the shoulders, I'm not trying to add in a whole lot of detail. This isn't the focal point of my drawing. Um, it's not necessary to spend a whole lot of time here adding details in there for it to look good or realistic. Uh, I usually focus all of my detail work on the face of my animal because that is the focal point. 
And that is it. You can learn more about drawing with colored pencils from the top right video, which is a short tutorial of a fox. Or you can watch the video YouTube recommends for you in the bottom right. This fox tutorial, of course, has a full real-time version over on my Patreon, where you can learn more in depth about all the processes there is to drawing with colored pencils and drawing this cute fox. This tutorial is available on my $5 a month tier. If you sign up, you will have access to it as well as many other tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.